Hi everyone, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net. Now we are starting our cardiovascular series that is tested on the NCLEX NGN. The first we have here is rheumatoid heart disease. This is the first and I believe 11 sets of cardiovascular tests that I will be putting out there. And then at the end I will be combining them. So I think there'll be like two or three videos with 100 questions that combine them. And remember that if you need information on pathophysiology, uh, nursing diagnosis, or nursing care plans, you can visit us at nursestudy.net. It's a free website, and you just type in on the search box what you're looking for, and it will come up. Enjoy. Before I forget, I do have free audiobooks via A6 Audible. All you need to do is look at the link in the description, and it's a free 30-day trial. You can get through the book within the 30 days. So please utilize this to get more um, questions for NCLEX NGN that you can listen to in your car or in the library. Question 1. A 16-year-old patient with a history of rheumatic fever presents with fatigue, dyspnea on exertion, and a newly detected heart murmur. The nurse anticipates which diagnostic test will most likely be ordered by the healthcare provider to evaluate the suspected rheumatic heart disease. A. Chest X-ray. B. Echocardiogram. C. Electrocardiogram ECG. D. Cardiac catheterization. Answer, B. Echocardiogram. Rationale, an echocardiogram is the most useful non-invasive diagnostic test for evaluating the structure and function of heart valves, which are often affected by rheumatic heart disease. It provides detailed images that can reveal valve damage, stenosis, or regurgitation. While the other tests can provide valuable information, the echocardiogram is the gold standard for assessing valve abnormalities in rheumatic heart disease. Question 2. A 30-year-old patient with rheumatic heart disease is admitted with worsening shortness of breath and orthopnea. The nurse recognizes that these symptoms may indicate which complication. A. Pulmonary embolism. B. Heart failure. C. Myocardial infarction. D. Pericarditis. Answer, B. Heart failure. Rationale, worsening shortness of breath and orthopnea in a patient with rheumatic heart disease are indicative of heart failure, a common complication due to the progressive damage to heart valves. This damage can lead to decreased cardiac output and pulmonary congestion, manifesting as the described symptoms. Question 3. During a follow-up visit, a patient with a history of rheumatic heart disease reports persistent fatigue and occasional dizziness. The nurse understands that these symptoms are most likely related to which underlying pathophysiological process? A. Decreased cerebral perfusion due to aortic stenosis. B. Hyperthyroidism. C. Anxiety and depression. D. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD. Answer, A. Decreased cerebral perfusion due to aortic stenosis. Rationale, persistent fatigue and dizziness in a patient with rheumatic heart disease may be due to aortic stenosis, where the narrowed aortic valve restricts blood flow, leading to reduced cerebral perfusion. This is a serious consequence of rheumatic fever-induced valve damage. Question 4. A nurse is educating a patient with rheumatic heart disease about the importance of antibiotic prophylaxis before certain procedures. Which procedure is most likely to require antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent bacterial endocarditis? A. Routine dental cleaning. B. Abdominal ultrasound. C. Chest X-ray. D. Blood transfusion. Answer, A. Routine dental cleaning. Rationale, patients with rheumatic heart disease are at increased risk for bacterial endocarditis due to damaged heart valves. Routine dental procedures, such as cleanings, can introduce bacteria into the bloodstream, making antibiotic prophylaxis necessary to prevent the serious infection. Question 5. A patient with rheumatic heart disease is scheduled for valve replacement surgery. 
The nurse prepares the patient by explaining the importance of which preoperative intervention. A. Administering a diuretic. B. Ensuring that the patient is free from infection. C. Withholding all medications. D. Restricting fluids. Answer, B. Ensuring that the patient is free from infection. Rationale, prior to valve replacement surgery, it is crucial to ensure the patient is free from infection to prevent postoperative complications such as prosthetic valve endocarditis. This involves assessing for signs of infection and administering prophylactic antibiotics as necessary. Question 6. The nurse is monitoring a patient with rheumatic heart disease who is receiving digoxin. Which assessment finding would require immediate intervention? A. Heart rate of 90 beats per minute. B. Serum potassium level of 3.5 milli equivalent per liter. C. Digoxin level of 2.5 nanograms per milliliter. D. Blood pressure of 120 over 80. Answer, C. Digoxin level of 2.5 nanograms per milliliter. Rationale, a digoxin level of 2.5 nanograms per milliliter is above the therapeutic range, 0.5 to 2.0 nanograms per milliliter, and indicates digoxin toxicity, which can lead to life-threatening arrhythmias, especially in a patient with heart disease. Immediate intervention is required to prevent complications. Question 7. A patient with rheumatic heart disease is experiencing severe mitral valve stenosis. The nurse knows that this condition can lead to which of the following complications? A. Atrial fibrillation. B. Ventricular tachycardia. C. Pulmonary embolism. D. Stroke. Answer, A. Atrial fibrillation. Rationale, severe mitral valve stenosis increases left atrial pressure leading to atrial enlargement and predisposition to atrial fibrillation. This arrhythmia can cause blood stasis in the atria, increasing the risk of thrombus formation and subsequent embolic events. Question 8. A nurse is caring for a patient with rheumatic heart disease who has developed a fever, chills, and a new heart murmur. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Administer acetaminophen. B. Draw blood cultures. C. Start broad spectrum antibiotics. D. Notify the healthcare provider. Answer B. Draw blood cultures. Rationale The priority action is to draw blood cultures before administering antibiotics to identify the causative organism in suspected infective endocarditis. This condition is a serious complication in patients with rheumatic heart disease and requires prompt diagnosis and treatment. Question 9. A patient with rheumatic heart disease presents with signs of right-sided heart failure. The nurse would expect which clinical findings? A. Pulmonary edema, crackles, and orthopnea. B. Ascites, peripheral edema, and jugular vein distension. C. Hypertension, headache, and visual disturbances. D. Chest pain, palpitations, and diaphoresis. Answer, B. Ascites, peripheral edema, and jugular vein distension. Rationale, right-sided heart failure, which can occur in rheumatic heart disease, typically presents with systemic congestion signs such as ascites, peripheral edema, and jugular vein distension, due to impaired right ventricular function. Question 10. A nurse is planning care for a patient with rheumatic heart disease who is at risk for developing infective endocarditis. Which nursing intervention is most appropriate to include in the care plan? A. Encouraging high fluid intake. B. Maintaining strict oral hygiene. C. Administering anticoagulants. D. Educating about low sodium diet. Answer, B. Maintaining strict oral hygiene. Rationale, strict oral hygiene is essential for preventing infective endocarditis in patients with rheumatic heart disease, because poor dental hygiene can lead to bacteremia, 
which can colonize damaged heart valves and cause infection. Question 11. A patient with a history of rheumatic heart disease and mechanical valve replacement is prescribed warfarin. Which patient teaching is crucial for the nurse to emphasize? A. Avoid foods high in potassium. B. Regularly monitor INR levels. C. Take aspirin daily. D. Increase intake of green leafy vegetables. Answer, B. Regularly monitor INR levels. Rationale, patients on warfarin therapy require regular monitoring of their INR to ensure it remains within the therapeutic range, reducing the risk of bleeding or thromboembolic events. This is especially important in patients with mechanical valves, which necessitate anticoagulation. Question 12. During a home visit, a nurse assesses a patient with rheumatic heart disease who reports increased fatigue and palpitations. What should the nurse suspect is occurring? A. Onset of ventricular fibrillation. B. Development of mitral regurgitation. C. Progression of aortic stenosis. D. Exacerbation of heart failure. Answer, B. Development of mitral regurgitation. Rationale, fatigue and palpitations in a patient with rheumatic heart disease may indicate the development of mitral regurgitation, where the mitral valve fails to close properly, leading to backflow of blood into the left atrium and decreased cardiac efficiency. Question 13. A nurse is caring for a patient with rheumatic heart disease who suddenly develops acute chest pain, dyspnea, and diaphoresis. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Administer nitroglycerin. B. Initiate oxygen therapy. C. Call for immediate assistance. D. Obtain an ECG. Answer, C. Call for immediate assistance. Rationale, the sudden onset of acute chest pain, dyspnea, and diaphoresis suggests a potentially life-threatening condition such as myocardial infarction or acute valve failure. The nurse's priority is to call for immediate assistance while preparing to initiate emergency interventions. Question 14. The nurse is reviewing discharge instructions with a patient who has rheumatic heart disease and a prosthetic valve. Which patient statement indicates a need for further teaching? A. I will need to take antibiotics before dental procedures. B. I can stop taking my warfarin once I feel better. C. I should avoid foods high in vitamin K. D. I need to monitor my blood pressure regularly. Answer, B. I can stop taking my warfarin once I feel better. Rationale, this statement indicates a misunderstanding as patients with prosthetic valves typically require lifelong anticoagulation therapy with warfarin to prevent thromboembolic events. Stopping warfarin abruptly could be dangerous. Question 15. A patient with a history of rheumatic heart disease is admitted with a suspected pulmonary embolism. The nurse anticipates which diagnostic test will be ordered first. A. D-dimer test. B. Chest X-ray. C. CT pulmonary angiography. D. Ventilation perfusion, VQ, scan. Answer, C. CT pulmonary angiography. Rationale, CT pulmonary angiography is the gold standard for diagnosing pulmonary embolism because it provides detailed images of the pulmonary arteries. While the D-dimer test is useful for ruling out PE, a CT pulmonary angiography is necessary for definitive diagnosis. Question 16. A nurse is educating a patient with rheumatic heart disease on the importance of medication adherence. Which medication is most likely to be prescribed to prevent recurrent rheumatic fever? A. ACE inhibitors. B. Beta blockers. C. Long-term penicillin. D. Diuretics. Answer, C. Long-term penicillin. Rationale, 
long-term penicillin or another suitable antibiotic is typically prescribed to prevent recurrent rheumatic fever in patients with a history of rheumatic heart disease. This prophylactic treatment helps prevent further damage to the heart valves. Question 17. A patient with rheumatic heart disease is scheduled for a colonoscopy. The nurse recognizes the need to clarify which aspect of the patient's pre-procedure care. A. Antibiotic prophylaxis. B. Bowel preparation regimen. C. NPO status. D. Post-procedure monitoring. Answer, A. Antibiotic prophylaxis. Rationale, for patients with rheumatic heart disease undergoing invasive procedures such as a colonoscopy, antibiotic prophylaxis may be necessary to prevent infective endocarditis. The nurse should clarify the need for this with the healthcare provider. Question 18. The nurse is assessing a patient with rheumatic heart disease who is at risk for developing heart failure. Which early symptom should the nurse monitor for? A. Peripheral edema. B. Nocturnal dyspnea. C. Orthostatic hypotension. D. Weight gain. Answer, B. Nocturnal dyspnea. Rationale, nocturnal dyspnea, or difficulty breathing at night, is an early sign of left-sided heart failure, which can occur due to the progressive damage from rheumatic heart disease. This symptom results from pulmonary congestion that worsens when lying down. Question 19. A patient with rheumatic heart disease is being discharged on a regimen of daily aspirin. The nurse should educate the patient about which potential complication. A. Increased risk of stroke. B. Gastrointestinal bleeding. C. Hypotension. D. Hyperkalemia. Answer, B. Gastrointestinal bleeding. Rationale, aspirin, an antiplatelet agent, increases the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding due to its effect on the stomach lining and its inhibition of platelet aggregation. Patients should be educated on the signs of GI bleeding and the importance of taking the medication as prescribed. Question 20. A nurse is caring for a patient with rheumatic heart disease who is exhibiting signs of infective endocarditis. Which laboratory test result would the nurse expect to find? A. Elevated troponin levels. B. Positive blood cultures. C. Low white blood cell count. D. Decreased erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR. Answer, B. Positive blood cultures. Rationale, positive blood cultures are a key diagnostic indicator of infective endocarditis, a serious complication of rheumatic heart disease. The presence of bacteria in the blood confirms the diagnosis and guides antibiotic therapy. Question 21. A patient with a history of rheumatic heart disease presents with complaints of fatigue and decreased exercise tolerance. The nurse suspects worsening mitral valve stenosis. What is the most appropriate nursing action? A. Encourage increased physical activity. B. Arrange for an immediate stress test. C. Notify the healthcare provider about the symptoms. D. Educate the patient about dietary modifications. Answer, C. Notify the healthcare provider about the symptoms. Rationale, fatigue and decreased exercise tolerance are classic symptoms of worsening mitral valve stenosis. The nurse's priority is to notify the healthcare provider so that appropriate diagnostic tests, such as an echocardiogram, can be ordered to assess the severity of the valve stenosis and guide treatment. Question 22. The nurse is providing discharge teaching to a patient with rheumatic heart disease and a mechanical mitral valve replacement. Which statement by the patient indicates a correct understanding of the need for anticoagulation therapy? A. I can stop my warfarin when I feel my heart is stable. B. I will need regular blood tests to monitor my INR. C. I can take herbal supplements freely with warfarin. D. I should avoid all physical activity while on warfarin. Answer, B. 
I will need regular blood tests to monitor my INR. Rationale, patients with mechanical valve replacements require lifelong anticoagulation therapy, typically with warfarin, to prevent thromboembolic events. Regular monitoring of the INR is essential to ensure the blood is adequately anticoagulated and to adjust the dosage as needed. Question 23. A patient with rheumatic heart disease is hospitalized for a planned mitral valve repair. The nurse reviews the preoperative orders and notes that the patient is to receive prophylactic antibiotics. What is the primary rationale for this order? A. To prevent postoperative wound infection. B. To prevent bacterial endocarditis. C. To treat an existing urinary tract infection. D. To reduce the risk of pneumonia. Answer, B. To prevent bacterial endocarditis. Rationale, patients with rheumatic heart disease undergoing invasive procedures, such as valve repair, are at increased risk of developing bacterial endocarditis. Prophylactic antibiotics are administered to prevent this potentially life-threatening infection. Question 24. During a routine examination, a nurse assesses a patient with a history of rheumatic heart disease and notes a diastolic murmur. The patient denies any symptoms. What is the most appropriate nursing intervention? A. Schedule the patient for a cardiac stress test. B. Monitor for symptoms and educate the patient on when to seek medical attention. C. Immediately notify the healthcare provider. D. Increase the frequency of follow-up visits. Answer, B. Monitor for symptoms and educate the patient on when to seek medical attention. Rationale, a diastolic murmur in a patient with rheumatic heart disease suggests valve involvement, possibly mitral or aortic valve stenosis. If the patient is asymptomatic, the nurse should educate the patient on potential symptoms of worsening valve disease and ensure regular monitoring while the healthcare provider should be informed during the next routine visit. Question 25. A nurse is educating a patient with rheumatic heart disease on lifestyle modifications to manage symptoms and prevent complications. Which recommendation is most appropriate? A. Avoid all physical activity to reduce cardiac workload. B. Follow a high-sodium diet to maintain blood pressure. C. Engage in moderate physical activity as tolerated. D. Increase fluid intake to prevent dehydration. Answer, C. Engage in moderate physical activity as tolerated. Rationale, patients with rheumatic heart disease should be encouraged to engage in moderate physical activity as tolerated to maintain cardiovascular health and prevent deconditioning. However, activities should be tailored to the patient's tolerance and energy levels, avoiding excessive strain on the heart.